So I'll go ahead and get started with that. Um, so I'm Jason Lee, and uh, this is another in a series of presentations about genetic genealogy, DNA testing. Um, please um, like this video, share, comment, subscribe. Um, I always like getting feedback and views, of course, but with this one in particular, we want to get the message out because we only have until the end of this month, we only have until the end of November uh, to take advantage of what's going on at MyHeritage. So we want to uh, get this message out one way or the other. And again, my full disclosure, I want to emphasize this. I do not have any ties with any of the DNA testing companies. I do not have any ties with uh, my heritage DNA, and I uh, wanted to emphasize that again because I will be strongly recommending uploading a copy of your raw data file from Ancestry or from one of the other DNA testing companies um, because I think uh, My Heritage has a lot to offer, but I do not have any kind of financial or personal ties with, Ancest uh, with uh, Ancestry or any of the others or uh, My Heritage that we're emphasizing tonight. So uh, just to get to the point early, I know that um, some people might view this uh, video later and not watch the whole thing. The, the key point here of this video is to upload a DNA file to MyHeritage as soon as possible uh, so that you can take it full, full advantage of all the free stuff that is currently available. And, and there still will be, um, a, you still will be able to um, upload a file for fr free um, and to get matches, but you won't be able to get as much for free as you can get now if you upload, upload now uh, sometime before uh, the end of the month. So get on that as soon as possible. Now we'll, we'll get into some details about why you want to do that and how to do that. So from uh, MyHeritage blog, they've said that DNA matching will remain free, so you'll still be able to get DNA matches for uploaded DNA, but additional features will not remain free. Uh, you will not, uh, apparently the ethnicity estimate will not remain free. A lot of people are interested in that. Uh, the chromosome browser apparently will not remain free. Uh, you'll have to pay extra for some of these features if you upload after the end of this month. If you uh, upload after the, uh, November 30, you will have to pay extra for features that are currently free indefinitely without any kind of charge or any kind of subscription. So we want to get as many people to take advantage of that not only for themselves, but for the rest of us who will show up as their matches. So all DNA data that was uploaded to MyHeritage in the past and all DNA data that's uploaded now, prior to uh, December 1, 2018, will continue to have full access to all of the DNA features for free. These uploads will be grandfathered in and will remain free. So if you get in before December 1, 2018, uh, you're getting the best deal possible. And so this is a screenshot uh, from the uh, blog at MyHeritage, um, you can follow this link. I've uh, put the link in the uh, PDF file um, prepared from this slide presentation, so you can access it that way or you can search it on Google and, and find that post. So again, um, MyHeritage has made it very easy. Uh, you can um, upload a raw data file from Ancestry or 23andMe or Family Tree of D DNA or Living DNA, all of those are options. All the major DNA testing, DNA matching companies um, allow you to download a, a raw DNA data file that can be uploaded to MyHeritage for new matches and for new tools. So uh, you have, have an opportunity there, regardless of where you've tested. So again, um, MyHeritage is saying that they offer full access to DNA matching, ethnicity estimates, the chromosome browser, and much more. All of that's free. Triangulation tools, you know, you're able to upload or build a tree for free, communicate with matches for free, and you get all of this without a monthly fee or um, a subscription. So um, it's a really good deal. And um, the database at MyHeritage has gotten to be quite large, uh, quite quickly. They're now up to about 2 million and growing very quickly. And uh, you can appreciate that if you have, uh, if you're on MyHeritage, you can see that uh, the number of good matches is growing very quickly. Uh, you do need to have a MyHeritage account. You can open up a MyHeritage account absolutely for free. You do not need to pay anything 
Um, I have had a free account for at least a couple of years now. Never had to pay anything for all of these tools and features. Uh, I have a tree. I have my DNA. I have DNA for uh, quite a few family members, and all of this has been available to me for free, and it's been very useful. So you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, when I uh, began uh, talking about this deadline um, on a couple of the Facebook groups, I got a lot of interesting comments. Jessica said, I did my uh, grandpa's DNA. We started with Ancestry, and then we uploaded his DNA to everywhere else. Glad I did. We just found his son two days ago through my heritage, and that was a comment on Monday. Pam says, I did it a while ago. My closest match with my, was my grandmother's first cousin's daughter, who had a lot of family history to share, and whose presence helped me to solve some other matches. It really paid off for me. So these are obviously real people that made comments um, on Monday. I found another half-cousin I didn't know about, and I introduced my cousins to their half-brother. They didn't know about each other. I was from Gwen. Leslie said, yes, I just transferred 18 of the kits I managed over to my heritage. Uh, hopefully I'm related to Leslie. That would be a, a, a nice batch of matches. Uh, Michelle says, yes, I haven't figured them all out, but there are more pieces of the puzzle now. Uh, it's been very helpful to me, says Roxy. I encourage people to upload to it. Uh, Kim says, for free, why not? I've added uh, all of my family and got new matches that I wouldn't have known about. So very exciting. Uh, Claudia Ann says, it's a great place for people with recent immigrants and their family trees. Patrick wins the enthusiasm award for his comment about my heritage. And Rhonda says, I up to, up, uploaded to my heritage and found my half sister the first day. So obviously, uh, different people are going to get different results, but there's certainly a lot of um, potential out there. Now, uh, to uh, figure out how to do this, there's actually a good video that MyHeritage has put out on Facebook, and as far as I can tell, it's only on Facebook. Um, I, I wasn't able to find it on uh, YouTube, and I, I sent a message to MyHeritage, and I didn't hear back from them. So uh, it may only be on Facebook. Uh, doesn't appear to be anywhere else. I provided a link here. If you find uh, the PDF file um, of, the, of the slides of this presentation, you can uh, follow that link directly to the video. It's one, only one and a half minutes long, and um, it's, it's very, it's very uh, good and I think um, helpful for those who may not be familiar. So I'm just going to present a few slides that summarize that video in case you have trouble accessing it. Uh, so we'll go over this. First of all, you go. This, we're using um, Ancestry DNA as an example. You can also do this with uh, Family Tree DNA, 23andMe, and, and some of the others. But uh, we're, we're uh, using um, Ancestry DNA as an example. So if you want to uh, download the Ancestry DNA raw data file, you go to log into Ancestry DNA and navigate to this page, the DNA Results Summary. And uh, this is obscured, but you'll click on Settings on that page. And then that takes you to uh, the next page where you click on the gray bar that says Download Raw DNA Data. And when you've clicked on that, you're prompted to put in your password again, uh, check a box, and click to confirm that you actually want to do this. Um, Ancestry has created a number of steps in this process. Uh, maybe uh, they're not entirely enthusiastic about facilitating uh, doing business with other companies, but um, if you do go through these steps, you will get your raw data file. The next step is to leave the Ancestry website and go to the email account that you have associated with um, Ancestry DNA and uh, find the email that they've sent to you with regard to this process. And when you open up that email, you'll find a, another green bar. This green bar says Confirm Data Download, so they want to be sure you're really serious about this. And then that takes you to a page, Download DNA Raw, raw Data. Finally, you have the opportunity to click on this green bar that says Download uh, DNA Raw Data. And uh, the uh, file will download to your computer. Uh, this summarizes the steps that we've talked about so far. This is a, a summary of the process of uh, downloading uh, the DNA file. Uh, you can find this image on my blog, DNA Genealogy. This is a link to that specific post. Uh, you can also get a step-by-step -step guide from Roberta Estes 
here, here is a link to a step-by-step -step guide for this process of downloading the raw DNA data file. Uh, you can also download a raw DNA data file from Family Tree DNA if that's where you have tested, uh, 23andMe as well, and uh, Living DNA. So I provided links that will help you uh, with the download for each of the companies. So once you've downloaded your file, the next step is to go to MyHeritage and uh, you'll go to myheritagedna.com slash upload. Um, and when you go to that page, you'll find a start button. And, uh, here's the link to that page. And so you find the start button when you go to that link and you click on the start button. And uh, you'll be asked to uh, fill out a few boxes and circles. Um, you um, indicate whether it's your DNA or someone else's DNA. Um, you have to um, accept the terms of service. You can read the details there. You have the option to um, choose to um, opt in to the consent agreement or not. That, that part is optional. And once you click the appropriate boxes, you click on the um, little uh, place where it says upload. And at that point, you're, you're essentially ready to go. You'll have to wait a day or two for results. And um, again, I recommend the, the video from MyHeritage. It's a very short video that summarizes what I just said. So after you've waited a day or two, um, depending on how busy things are, uh, you'll, you'll get results. And this is what uh, my, my results look like. Um, top of the page for the DNA overview. Um, provides an ethnicity estimate. Some of you will be more interested in that, some will be less interested, but this is um, a summary of the eth ethnicity estimate. There's a more detailed um, ethnicity estimate. Uh, if you scroll down this page, you'll come to um, an area that summarizes the relationship. So I have a total of well over 10,000 matches. Uh, scrolling down further, you'll find the locations of your matches. So uh, the the majority of mine, of course, are from the United States of America, but um, quite a few other places are very well represented. Uh, then if you uh, click on this little area that says ethnicity estimate, after you've looked at the overview, uh, you can get some more details about your ethnicity estimate. Uh, I won't go into detail about that, but um, I am particularly interested in what you can do with DNA matches. That's my particular area of interest. And I think that's the main reason to, trans to uh, transfer to my heritage from any of the other companies. If you have tested already, you already have an ethnicity estimate, and that es ethnicity estimate um, is probably um, as good as any other. But um, what you will get at my heritage that you won't get at the other companies is a whole new set of matches. Now, some of the matches will be matches that you're familiar with from the other companies, but some will be brand new, and you'll have access to tools that you don't have at any of the other uh, DNA companies, uh, particularly with your um, ancestry matches. You'll have access to a lot of uh, detailed information that uh, ancestry doesn't provide. So uh, for me, the, the most compelling reason to um, use my heritage is to uh, get access to these additional matches and these additional tools. So. At the top of the list for me are my kids, and as I scroll down that page, um, I find some other matches. I want to uh, highlight Kathleen here because Kathleen um, uploaded uh, a family tree and has provided some good information. And so you can see what you get with a match when your match has provided a lot of good information. So in this case, we were zooming in. Kathleen uh, shares some surnames that MyHeritage has uh, conveniently uh, uh, compared for us. Uh, already, and then we can we can see what we have in common in terms of surnames. Um, Ancestry has, I'm just kidding, uh, my heritage has also compared our family trees to look for shared ancestral locations, so uh, that can be helpful as well. Um, in the middle here, you see view smart matches, and I'll talk just a second about that. Um, the smart matches uh, give you uh, information about what you have in common. So here in our case, we see that we both have uh, the same Martin Henry Schumann in our family trees. And as it turns out, this Martin Henry Schumann is our MRCA, our most recent common ancestor. And he, in fact, is the ancestral source of the DNA that we share. We, I was able to confirm that with additional comparisons by looking at the chromosome browser. So um, uh, uh, MyHeritage really lays things out very well for you. 
Um, it gives you a lot of good information in a very convenient form. So going back to Kathleen, uh, we, we clicked on View Smart Matches. If we go to Review DNA Match, we get a lot of additional information. Um, I'm going to highlight some of that, but not all of it. I don't have time to get into all the details. I need to do another presentation later that really gets into all of the features and details, but this is an overview. So uh, having clicked um, on that Review DNA Match uh, bar there, um, I'm taken to a, a good number of interesting items. Um, the, one of the most important is the uh, list of shared matches. So here is my sister, here's my niece, and here's another match. Uh, one thing I want to emphasize with this match, Elaine here, um, I don't share a lot of DNA with Elaine, only 13 centimorgans, but um, my heritage shows me that um, Elaine and Kathleen do share a good amount of DNA, 163 centimorgans. So that could turn out to be a very helpful match, despite the fact that I might have overlooked it, uh, only knowing how much that I share with Elaine. Um, so, and this is information that um, not all of the DNA companies provide. Uh, and so I really give uh, MyHeritage a lot of credit for uh, providing this additional information that can be very helpful if you're trying to dig deep and learn about your family history by looking at shared matches. So very helpful there. Um, MyHeritage shows um, groups of your shared matches on this page. Uh, to, to see all of them, you'll click on Show More. In this case, we have 266 shared matches. Uh, so that's another good feature of MyHeritage. Uh, they show you all of your shared matches, not just uh, the top shared matches, and that, that can be helpful. So moving on down this same page, scrolling down, um, I have um, Kathleen's family tree conveniently displayed here. Uh, so um, that's a really nice feature uh, combined with the other information on the same page. It's all um, very convenient on one page. And, st and scrolling down further, again, on the same page, I have access to uh, information about our shared DNA displayed on a chromosome browser. And uh, so we not only know how much DNA we share, but we know how it is distributed across the genome. And as you learn more about genetic genealogy, you can uh, exploit this detailed information to uh, learn a lot about your family history in ways that aren't otherwise possible. So very convenient to have that chromosome browser information displayed available and available in a very convenient form. Uh, this is another chromosome browser view. Uh, there's a standalone um, chromosome browser. In addition to the chromosome browser results that you get on the DNA match pages, this shows me in comparison with several close family members, so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Uh, this is uh, me versus um, a group of people who are closely related to each other, but distantly related to me, so you can see uh, what that looks like. So again, um, all of this is free. I've never paid for a subscription. Um, I've never paid a fee for any of this. This is all for free uh, without any subscription. And um, if you upload all of the kits that you manage, um, maybe you just have yourself or maybe you have um, a, a number of family members uh, who've uh, tested with you, um, if you upload all of that as soon as possible before the end of this month, you'll be able to access all of this for free as well. So again, remember, you're getting DNA matching, an ethnicity estimate, chromosome browser, smart matching, the ability to communicate with your matches. You can communicate for free. I know some people have had some problems with some glitches, uh, but uh, you are uh, able to communicate for free. You're able to view your matches family trees. Again, this is all for free. And you have access to various triangulation features that I, I didn't really talk about much. So um, again, I recommend the MyHeritage video that summarizes the process of uh, downloading your raw data from Ancestry DNA and um, uploading it to MyHeritage. You can uh, download raw data from other companies as well. And again, I'll ask you to uh, like, share, comment, subscribe if you appreciated this video and you want to encourage others to do as we have done. Uh, please uh, get this information out one way or the other. So uh, that's the end of what I had prepared. Uh, if there are any questions, we can, um, we can discuss those. Of course, uh, this post will be up um, even after we're done with the presentation. So um, the questions can
can uh, be addressed later. If you don't have questions now, uh, this uh, video will also be posted to YouTube. So um, we're going to uh, put this out in a, in a couple different forms. Hopefully the word will get out and um, people will uh, take full advantage of, of what we have available to us. Susan says, if I upload all of the kits I manage, do they each need their own free account? Or can I add them under mine I already have? Okay, so that's a very good question. I'm glad that somebody asked it because I didn't address that during the presentation. So an excellent question from Susan. Um, the answer to that question is that you can upload all of the kits you manage to a single account. And that's what I've done. I've got uh, probably 12 to 15 um, uh, kits all under one account. That's very convenient. Not all of the, of the companies have it set up that way. So um, again, I'm giving um, my heritage credit for doing something uh, that's convenient for those of us who are deep into the research. Um, you can uh, manage as many people as you like under one account and switch back and forth between those accounts as you're doing your research. That's very convenient and easy and you don't have to open up a separate account, set up sham accounts with sham emails for each person. Uh, you can do everything that you need to do under one account with one email. Uh, it's all very easy. So another person asked, when I click on any views from the main match page, my heritage takes me to a subscription uh, page. I thought that viewing shared matches and trees were free. So I'm not 100% sure why that's happening to you, but I've, I've never had that happen. Um, you might ask around in the various Facebook groups. You can ask in the Ancestry DNA Matching Facebook group. Uh, that group is also for people who have um, uploaded um, raw DNA data from, my, uh, from Ancestry to MyHeritage. There's also um, a MyHeritage users group. So if you're having glitches, if you're being asked to uh, do a subscribe, if, if, if things like that are, are coming at you, then um, you might um, ask around uh, to find out why you're having that problem. Um, I've never had that problem, uh, so I'm not sure why that's happening. But, it, uh, but uh, it's, you, should, you do not have to subscribe to get access to all of the results and tools. Let's see, Jessica, I just ordered my DNA test kit. Does this thing mean that it will cost me on my heritage plan to get my results? So if, you, if, you've, if you've ordered a test kit, that's fine. You're, you're of course, going to get um, all of the uh, tools and features that uh, the uploaders are getting. So that's no problem. Marcy, um, could you explain, again, how to find smart matching? It just takes me to the subscription page. So if you're getting invited to look at a subscription page. Um, I'm not sure um, what to tell you about that. I, I can tell you that um, early on um, I did have, I had uploaded um, a very large tree uh, for my uh, account. Um, and when I had that large tree, um, I was getting a little uh, request to subscribe, but I never had to actually subscribe. So it was asking me to subscribe, but I never actually had to uh, respond to that to continue using everything. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. I don't know if, if, if other people are running into something different. Um, but what I did just to get that reminder or that request to stop popping up was to uh, create a smaller tree to upload to my heritage, so I got rid of the bigger tree that had maybe 2,000 people in it. I got rid of that tree and uploaded a tree that was under 250, because that's where they draw the line. Um, uh, if you have a smaller tree, um, they um, they say you're below a, a certain threshold. So I, I uploaded a small, smaller tree just with direct ancestors in it, um, and, and, the, and and it was under 250 people. Of course, that's still enough. If you're limited, limiting uh, the tree to direct ancestors only, that's still enough uh, to do a good number of generations. So uh, you might try that if you're having trouble. Uh, if you've linked a tree um, and you're getting 
um, messages to subscribe, uh, you might simply um, upload a smaller tree with direct ancestors only. Uh, that worked for me. So another person asks, um, so you were creating a family tree on my heritage and ancestry as well. So I did not uh, create a family tree from scratch on my heritage. I believe that's an option. I haven't tried it. Um, I uh, downloaded a JEDCOM file from uh, Ancestry, actually. So I created a much smaller direct ancestor tree uh, going back um, five or six generations. Um, I created a tree um, on Ancestry and I downloaded the JEDCOM file for that simple, smaller direct ancestor tree and I uploaded that JEDCOM file to my heritage, uh, and that worked perfectly well for me. I guess you need to be a premium member to con contact uh, others on my, my heritage, Susan asks. Uh, that is not correct. You do not need to be a premium member to contact others on my heritage. You can contact your matches for free. I have uh, never been a premium member, I've never paid uh, my heritage any kind of fee. Uh, and I have always been able to contact my matches without any difficulty. Uh, I'll take that back. I've, uh, occasionally, on, on rare occasion, I'll run into a little glitch. Uh, but I found if I just try it again a few seconds later, I don't have any problems. So um, you absolutely can contact your DNA matches at MyHeritage for free without having um, a premium uh, membership or uh, having uh, paid any kind of fees or... Um, pay for any kind of subscription. So um, it's absolutely unnecessary. Uh, although, um, you know, I, I appreciate what my heritage is doing, so I did ultimately buy a couple of kits to support the, uh, support the company. I'm, I'm glad that they're doing what they're doing. And, um, so I like doing business with people who are doing good work. So I did buy a kit for uh, later on, uh, much later on, uh, for my first cousin and for my niece but um, I haven't paid uh, my heritage for anything else. So I'm, uh, I'm, I can tell you from firsthand experience, um, you can get a lot done. Uh, you can access all of these things that I've shown you um, at MyHeritage um, absolutely for free. Uh, 